Look at that face. Look at that face. This lady claims to be world's best life coach. I agree though. But look at her. She claims that she has healed so many people from their misery, from their physical illnesses. And today I'm going to put her in the stands. I'm going to ask her questions that nobody is willing to ask her. Please welcome Miss Sheila Madhilakar. Applause, applause, applause. <laughs> So Sheila, just before we start anything else, Sheila, you just concluded your retreat. It was sacred feminine, feminine retreat. Okay, why don't you tell us a little about that? I'm really excited and I'm so upset I couldn't attend with you. I'm so glad you didn't attend it. Sacred, <laughs> the sacred feminine retreat dealt completely with trauma and how to release trauma without too much of talking and too much, without too much of explanation and too much of gyan giving. So this was completely experiential and we used various processes to help release the trauma from the cells. How interesting it was. It was, even if I say so myself. And that's going to be the topic of our discussion today. But intro please. Hi there. You're listening to Spirituality Sideshow, where the weird meets the wonderful. Hit it. So Vidika, before you put me on stand, let me ask you this question. Do I know the answer, people? What happened to your hand? Sheila, every time I start something new, like I started working out, I sabotage it by harming myself somehow. This was from a very innocent fall, which nobody expected. I definitely didn't. And then it escalated to a month of bags and ice packs and physio. Okay. And why do you think that happens, Deepika? This, people, is a very good example of how your mind will sabotage you every single time. And how does that happen and why does that happen? This is because we live through lives thinking that our minds and bodies are disconnected. But it is not so. Thoughts and emotions are like two sides of the same coin. And every thought that you think is followed by an instant emotion in the body. Now most of us are not aware of this phenomena. So which is why we walk around in life being completely unaware completely numb to our emotions, not knowing how we feel. Do you know that there are four categories of emotions? Okay. Mad, bad, sad, glad. <laughs> and most of us are not aware of these emotions. We know two or three I emotions. just knew good or bad. <laughs> yeah. That's it. You know, happy, sad, pain, disappointment, some few things like that. But most of us are not aware of the range of emotions that are coursing through our body. And every emotion, good or bad, Sad, mad, glad or bad, any of these emotions, they create a biochemical change in your body. Oh, yes. When you feel stressed, what happens? There are chemicals coursing through your body. You right, know? right. There is, uh, there is adrenaline being produced, there is cortisol being produced and we are walking around with high levels of stress. And what exactly is stress and anxiety? It's nothing but, you know, worry about the future and thinking, overthinking about the past. And that's what's happening. And because we don't want to feel emotions, that is one of the things. We don't want to feel the emotions, so we will do anything but. Which is why there are three or four ways in which we actually react. The first one is that we may we may decide to you know numb them all and not think about them, shove them under that metaphorical. Me, carpet. me, me. You sound like those birds in uh, Finding Nemo. <laughs> me, me, me. Yeah, but a lot of us are me, me, me. You know, we, yeah. we numb our emotions. We don't want to think about them. We shove them under the carpet and say, okay, I'll look at it later when I have better strength. That never comes. That day never comes. The second way that we deal with emotions is by what I would call venting. We yell, shout, curse, fight. You know, even a driver overtaking you on the road creates a huge break of the dam and you're yelling and showing fingers and cursing them to, to hell and back. Yeah. Right? That is how we deal with emotion, which is venting it. And the third way by which we actually deal with emotions is by uh, my favorite way, which is escaping, shopping, overeating, watching Netflix, procrastinating. These are ways by which we decide that we don't want to look at our emotions so we will escape from them. But haven't we glorified these by Netflix and chill? And Let's chill. catch up over coffee and movies. Yes. And that over scrolling of social media. Yeah. 
once you go down that rabbit hole of Instagram and Facebook, there's no coming back. So these are various ways in which we actually handle handle our emotions. Or I should say, these are various ways in which we do not handle our emotions. Now, ah, you forgot the fourth one, Jida. The fourth one is the good way. The fourth one is how you release these emotions so that they don't sit in your body as a block. Emotions. Okay. <laughs> emotions is what? Emotion. Energy in motion. Right. Right. And energy, the property of energy is flowing. Energy always moves. So if you're going to hold on to joy or happiness, that also creates a block in your body. So it doesn't matter what your emotions are, whether they are sad. Do you know, remember the categories? Sad, mad, bad, rad. Glad. Glad. <laughs> Wonderful. Good job. Good job. Even those four categories, no matter which category of emotion you feel, they all have to flow through your body. <laughs> so the step number one is awareness. What is it that I'm feeling at this moment? Now, coming back to your fall mm -hmm. and why I'm telling you that it is created by a subconscious mind. It is, it is created by the thought that we have in our head. The thought that, you know what, there are certain things that I need to punish myself for. I'm not eating well. I'm not spending enough time on my personal growth. I'm not, I really don't want to do certain jobs and I don't know how to express it. So what do I do? I create a fall in my body and I hurt myself. So then no one questions me about why I'm not doing any of these questions. And then along with the fall, you create pain. Do you know what pain is? Pain is supposed to be punishment. Pain is guilt and punishment. You're punishing yourself for something that you think you did wrong. This is becoming like a, uh, you know, me, a self introspection class for me. Okay, you're getting close to the title you hold. But I want to ask you, Sheila, but yeah. then why don't people just get over all this shit and just find ways and learn little ways to deal with emotions that are just hanging in there? Because people do not know. Most of us are not aware that our bodies are trying to speak to us with our emotions. Mm -hmm. And most of us do not know how to listen to the language of our body. But do I need to keep like a stethoscope all time with me? Like, uh, because I am decently well aware, I feel so, after working with you with almost eight years. Yeah. And uh, I still fall and I still get so uh, sabotaged my plans. Uh, it doesn't mean that once you, are, once you become aware of this, everything is now going to be hunky-dory. No, we are you, humans. We are here in this world to learn from our faults, mm -hmm. right? So every time you make a mistake, you're learning from it. You're looking at what is the gift in that mistake and then moving forward. But what happens to most of us? We make a mistake, we beat ourselves up and we sit there in that crap. And that's what causes all the emotion. Yeah, I saw your, I saw your expression. <laughs> but I seriously, I really believe this. You know, if, if you have a, in your house, I'm going to make the worst of this phase because I've heard this analogy from you. Yes, I'm going to repeat this analogy again. In your house, if your toilet doesn't work, right? You try to flush, but nothing gets flushed away. And you leave it over there. Every time you use the bathroom, it just keeps overflowing. It overflows onto the bathroom yeah. floor. And if you still don't take care of it, it then overflows into your living room, fills up your entire house. Now your entire house stinks and that's exactly what happens when you hold on to emotions your entire life stinks think about it think about the conflicts you have in your relationships think about the conflicts at work think about the conflicts that you have with your own health think about the various health challenges that you're creating in your body and yes you heard it right you are creating your health challenges my god we need an intermittent fasting for your mind as well now isn't it yes Yes, you need to fast. You need to fast from all those negative thoughts you have. Yeah. You have to be aware of what you're thinking and then correlate it. With but them. the funny part was, Sheila, I went, uh, I did this 10 day course in Vipassana and it was completely of communication. No communication at all. You couldn't speak to yourself like verbally. You couldn't, you had no phone, no connection with your family, nothing. But that was the time when all my mental sewage actually kept pouring on. Yes. Then how did that fasting even help me? You can only change that which you are aware of. 
if you're not even aware of what you are creating in your body, how will you change it? See, this is not something that I'm, I am saying right now, or this is not some epiphany that I've had. I've been reading a lot of books, I've been working with a lot of doctors, and I know this for sure. Medical science has now proven, you know, there is an entire batch of doctors who now believe that the medicines that we give are just clearing of all your symptoms. That is, it is doing it at a superficial level. Numbing the symptoms, yes. yes. The real root of the problem, we are still not, we've still not reached that with the medicines that we give. So whether you're talking about diseases like cancer, whether you're talking about autoimmune diseases, thyroid, diabetes, thyroid, diabetes, high blood pressure, these are all supposed to be lifestyle diseases. Mm -hmm. I mean, what do you mean by lifestyle? These lifestyle diseases, each of this has got a problem at the root. And the root is that our biochemistry in the body is not right. When the biochemistry is not right, it creates diseases. <laughs> and that was proven by Dr. Bruce Lipton in his clinical studies. Yeah, that's It right. was done by that. Where he, he showed that, you know, a cell, you take a cell from the nose and you put it in a cell which is generating, let's say, hips or which is generating fat. That nose cell then becomes a fat cell or becomes a hip cell because the system in which you place the cell, that is what creates the cell. So the, the biggest system that we are living in is a body. Our cells, trillions and trillions of yeah. cells live in our body. And every yeah, and people are, are finding every day something new. Scientists are finding yes. something new about the yeah. human body. And Still. every day we are blasting our body with multitude of emotions which we are not even aware of. Can you imagine how the biochemistry of the body keeps changing? True. You know, from happiness, where you have happy hormones flowing through, you have dopamine flowing through through your body, you have serotonin flowing through your body, and then suddenly you your entire emotion shifts, and then you have adrenaline coursing through your body. From an alkaline pH, your body is now shifting to an acidic pH. It is but natural that your body will create diseases. Yeah, and uh, I mean, I can vouch for this because I work with you when I have this illness, which allopathy, homeopathy, and uh, Ayurveda couldn't cure. Yes. And we worked for a couple of sessions and I was able to heal that. Yes. So that was one of my biggest achievements. Yes. Yeah. And, yes, and you know, Geetika, that I do work with uh, people who are suffering from cancer. Right. And after we do, now, cancer, if you look at Louise Hay's book, one of the things that she says is that cancer is caused by this resentment that we hold towards someone else. And it is an entire process of releasing the grudge going through a process of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Now, I have worked with so many patients where they come with various types of cancers and each type of cancer actually says what kind of resentment you're holding on to. And when you work with these people, I've seen that, you know, their doctors are so dumbstruck. See, you know, we didn't <laughs> see the mass. We didn't see the mass. What happened to the mass? Uh, right. That's what happens because the moment you shift from resentment and grudge into forgiveness and peace, your body starts changing. True, true. And that uh, uh, Louise also has a book called You Can Heal Your Body. Yes. And her uh, movie, which is called You Can Heal Your Life, which is available on YouTube very easily, beautiful yeah. movie. It talks about all the people, has testimonies from all the people who actually heal themselves yes. just by changing their thoughts. Yes. And it's so beautiful. I mean, I didn't know that people didn't have to take loans and spend lakhs and lakhs yes. on curing themselves, whereas they could just have changed that one little thought. And yes, of course, it's not as simple as we make it. Sound. That's why you're there, right? <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Yes. And the, the thought that I want to leave our viewers with is very simple. I want to leave you with this example. Every time you fall ill, I want you to just think about it. Why are you ill? Ah, don't give me all these reasons that I've got fever, you know, I've got low BP. I'm saying, why are you ill? What is it that you don't want to say? What is that work that you don't want to do, but you don't want to confront anyone and say, I cannot do it. You don't want to say no. You don't want to set boundaries. You want a lot of attention and you don't know how to get the attention except by falling in. Very true, very true. And uh, you know, I, I feel that now that uh, you've given all this information which is absolutely overwhelming to me because while I understood little illnesses, I didn't uh, feel really, believe that cancer could be cured, but uh, you work with people 
for our listeners for this session can you leave us with a very small exercise that people can do just to start becoming aware that their mind and body is connected because a lot of people don't even realize that you know gitika we have been given a beautiful healing tool if i were to open my toolbox this one ha ha she has toolbox here yeah. you killing it proving it trying to prove that you're the best life coach ha huh? no if i were to tally i would put tally marks here yeah, put your tally marks inside this if you if you open my toolbox one of the most beautiful tools that i have over there is something which we all have and that is our breath we breathe about 25000 times in a day mm. and most of the time we are shallow breathing or not using in the way it's supposed to be yeah. but when you breathe what happens is your entire system is slowing down and then you become really aware of what you're feeling in fact there is a very simple tool which we can use as a demonstration gitika would you be willing to volunteer yes i mean you don't have any choice but <laughs> <laughs> okay gitika think of think of someone or something that is really troubling you something i have in my mind you know, okay which is troubling you yeah okay. now what i want you to do is tilt your head downwards and look into the center of your body and as you do it you will feel some kind of energy in some part of your body where exactly are you feeling it something which is not in harmony with your body my fingers is a lot of tingling lot of tingling okay so focus on that and now i'm going to show you a very simple exercise okay all the energy which is attached to this emo- to this situation that you're going through is now showing up in your fingers okay? yes so all i want you to do is imagine that you're putting this is like it's an oil well okay now in an oil well first you discover where the well is and once you discover the oil well you put a hose into it and you pull the entire energy out right so imagine you're putting a pipe into this oil well where you have this energy and just breathe breathe deeply and slowly and as you tilt your head down a little more yes because when you tilt your head you disconnect your thought and you go into your body and as you breathe tell me what you feel in I'm feeling calmness. Okay. Little less uh, that prickly feeling is going. Okay. Okay. Just continue breathing. You know this. This requires exactly two minutes or three minutes. Whenever you, something troubles you, think about it. Put your head down. Look into the center of your body and notice where it's coming. It can be in your shoulders. It can be in your arms. It can be in your fingers. It can be in your stomach. It can be in your chest. and just breathe into it imagine you're sucking the entire thing out and pushing it out and it's gone and it feels much stronger yeah okay you can open your eyes now do you realize how simple this is yeah because it when you disconnect from your head you, it is possible for you to actually connect with your body and when you connect with your body you then become aware of all the sensations You really don't have to name the emotions. You don't have to figure out, oh, am I feeling hostility? Am I feeling grudge? Am I feeling unforgiveness? Am I feeling anger? Forget it. Forget all mm-hmm. those. You will feel an energy which is not in harmony with your system, and that's what you need to release. That's it. Very cool. Very cool. Shiva, that is really interesting. I think uh, the first time I heard this. Uh, body and mind connection i was over so maybe the people are but this exercise seems pretty simple let's try and tune in and uh, to be very frank uh, while the tingling slightly reduced the biggest thing that i felt chila was that uh, i was able to calm my mind down yes and ask it to keep quiet for a while while i explore other things in my yes. body and i think that as you said is awareness is the beginning yes so you are rating very well on the world's best life coach <laughs> and if it be for with the severe problems or uh, something that they're not able to deal with and are spending a lot of money i really really recommend 
that you connect with Sheila over a call, over an email or on her channels, Instagram, she replies instantly. All the details are in the bio description below and it will be very exciting to see the change because our body is such a beautiful tool that we don't use very well for our benefit. It is, it is indeed a great mechanism that we have with huge intelligence within it which can be used to heal everything whether it's on a mental, physical, emotional or a spiritual plane. We just need to learn, we just need to learn how to use our body well. Awesome, awesome session podcast. I really hope you enjoyed it. Do leave your comments. We'd love to know what you're thinking about and it'll be interesting to bring you on, on in our conversations and talk about what you think. So leave your comments and we'll be very happy to look into them and talk to you. Thank you so much. That's it for today. Have a good day.